this this is not uh this is not uh, yeah this is not breakup energy this is let's heal energy and remember you guys remember healing only hurts in the beginning y'all remember that keep that in your mind when you are in the midst of the turmoil in the midst of the tension i know it's it's easier said than done however just Take solace and and be 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 assured that the the hurt will only be brief and it's only in the beginning. Once the hurt is over, then the healing begins. So I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm I'm dealing with um, some issues uh, 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 related to Kyron and and my seventh house and second house and some things that happened when I was just a little itty bitty sucker uh, and how they have affected me uh, with every relationship I've ever had with any woman, female, girl, didn't matter if it was an intimate one, if it was business, if I worked for them or they worked for me, uh, school, friends, what, it doesn't matter. All, any relationship I've had with a female, with a woman uh, has been affected by what happened to me when I was around seven or eight years old. And I'm seeking my help and I'm getting my help to, to work through that and to come out and heal. I want to heal from that shit. You know, I'm sick of the same repeating pattern, same repeating pattern. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. So uh, I'm taking advantage of, of, of this healing opportunity. I'm, I'm taking advantage of, uh, I, I, I've been sending up a trigger and a talent uh, every day uh, this week, and I'm going to continue to do that until this issue, this particular issue that I'm talking about, I begin to heal from. So I encourage anyone uh, to seek help when you need it, uh, mental health is just as important as physical health and and also uh, uh encourage each and every one of us to let all of that shit go oh, man face it and let's let it go face it and let's let it go uh working on a a show um where we're going to expose all of those folks and jobs and whatever that uh have traumatized us and have molested and fondled and and otherwise disturbed our soul working on that concept for that got to be careful with how we're going to expose people uh set ourselves set myself up for tremendous liability so i'm working through through the logistics and the legalities of all of that, but know for a fact that, yeah, the all them creepy uncles and creepy aunts and creepy scout leaders and creepy deacons and creepy preachers and creepy teachers, yeah, yeah, they gonna they gonna not want to hear on the sevens with Piper's beat Metatron. So with that, uh, we're gonna run into our regularly scheduled course this is master self numerology april 9th 2022 our regularly scheduled 4 p.m pacific daylight time class today is interpretations of number of obstacle numbers one two three and four now i know on the last uh class i i I crammed a whole lot into the last class. I hope I didn't put anyone on overload. However, I do want us to, to feel like this is an immersion uh, course. I want you to just bathe. I, wanna, I want us to bathe in this so that it's not 
as we go further, the concepts that I introduce won't be difficult to grasp because they've already been embedded in you through this immersion. So uh, we are dealing with <clears throat> uh, obstacles numbers one, two, three, and four. If you have any of these obstacles in your chart, obstacle one, obstacle two, or three, or four, just uh, put a thumbs up or something in the, uh, in the uh, chat box and know that when we get to that number, pay attention very, very keenly as it will be directly talking about you. So I have, uh, not only do I have uh, number one obstacles uh, back to back, uh, I also have an, an outstanding or an overall number one obstacle. So this number one obstacle that we're gonna go through, went through a little bit of it uh, the other day. However, we're gonna go all the way through it today. So <clears throat> number one obstacle. The appearance of a number one obstacle signals the feeling of oppression and of being held down or back. And it will be most often experienced by and through the immediate family, relatives, and those with stronger wills of determination. Let me explain uh, 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 why this was uh, very apparent for me um, as soon as I uh, became aware, self-aware of myself between age seven or eight, that uh, the oppression and being held down and held back, especially by my grandmother and my mother and, and you know, uh, a particular aunt and my uncles, uh, uh, they, they all thought that I was too big for my britches. You know, us country folk, folks that, that grew up in the country, you, some of y'all done heard that, that saying, being uh, too big for your britches. And, you know, one of the worst slaps in my mouth was, no, I'm not because I got a belt, see? And that's the belt makes sure my britches and I got popped in the mouth. And it was because of stuff like that. Uh, because, um, you know, I didn't, in the beginning, I didn't have a filter. Um, and and, and I, I wouldn't, I, I had very little patience for what I thought was ignorance. And, you know, you grow up with folks who didn't go far in school. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, my the people that raised me primarily both were born uh, at the turn of 19th century. So so they were they were both born. My grandfather was born in 1900 and my grandmother in 1906. So, you know, their vernacular and their way of conversating definitely uh, uh, rubbed the kid wrong in the wrong way in 1970, 71, 72, you know, uh, so. Um, and because of, of the gifts that became apparent in me at that age, um, yeah, I was uh, oppressed and held down and held back out of their own fear, fear of what someone would say about them, not so much what, what anybody would do about me. I don't even think they really were concerned about what would happen to me. They were more concerned with saving face for the family. So the appearance of a number one obstacle signals the feeling of oppression and of being held down or back. And it will most often be experienced by and through immediate family relatives and those with stronger wills. Uh, when you have a number one obstacle, you must make every effort into cultivating a very steady will. Can't be wishy-washy. You gotta, uh, uh, I've had to 
make choices and decision and stances and right or wrong, I've had to <clears throat> plant myself and not be moved uh, from a very young age. Uh, and, and before I became fully aware of the intricacies of numerology, I didn't understand why I was like that, but I was just like, uh, and I'm like, I'm, this is where I'm at. And this is what I believe. And if you, I'm not going to be moved. You come up here and push me, I'm going to push you back. So anyone with a number one obstacle anywhere uh, at any period, uh, you must make a concerted effort into cultivating a steady will don't be moved don't be pushed you make your stance and you set your boundaries and that's it uh you must make effort into cultivating a refined and channeled expressed determination this uh uh modem right here this this uh, uh what word am i looking for this platform this this uh, uh, uh arena there we go there we go i knew it would come to me this arena that I am broadcasting uh, and sharing this information and this knowledge with all of you, this is my refined and channeled expressed determination. The folks who always wanted to negate what I'm doing and always uh, be negative about what I'm doing and always cast doubt about what I'm doing. They can't stop me from doing this right here. This is refined and channeled. <laughs> so they can't stop it. The best thing that they could do is don't listen. I'm, I'm serious. Anybody who is not going to use this information and wisdom and knowledge for their betterment, I would rather you not come on here and waste your time. Same thing I used to tell folks when I was uh, 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 running a, a rehabilitation home and we would have uh, uh, meetings. And I start off the meeting, I say, anybody in here know that you're going to go out and get high again? You can get up and leave now because you're wasting a whole lot of good getting high time sitting up in here. You can go ahead and go right now. Then somebody who wants to be here can sit down. Yes, Victorious. So I have um, a couple of things that I wanted to point out. All right. Um, so I have two challenges um, back to back mm -hmm. during my second and third period of my life. Mm -hmm. I also thought it was really ironic that my sister had the same exact challenges in the mm -hmm. same exact order that I have in her life. And here's something else that I thought was really interesting. My mom is a triple Aries. Uh -huh. um, her rising is Aries, her sun is Aries, her Venus conjuncts her sun in Aries in her 12th house. And my mom has an 11 two birth path. And then she also has a one destiny and a one personality. <laughs> so this, day, this is all up in her cabinet. Well, and then here's another thing that's ironic too, because I'm, I'm talking about the ones and you talk about how our family limit us. And my mother, being an Aries, ran that house like a drill sergeant. Absolutely. And so, um, again, we I grew up in that era in 72. I was born, and I came from that era where we were to be seen and not heard. Absolutely. And so it stifled me in how I communicated as an adult moving forward. But another thing I wanted to point out is with my sister, she has a one destiny birth path. I'm sorry, a one birth path in uh, an 11 to destiny mm -hmm. and then she also has an 11 to uh heart's desire like me so i'm looking at all these ones and and ironically enough i know the 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 11 acts like a two but you don't break it down but when i looked at the two from my mom i didn't see, see the two energy i saw a a double one and how powerful those ones showed up in her life. Absolutely. The two didn't resonate for her. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm just seeing all these ones around me and I, I see the people that stifled me the most and they all had a lot of one energy. Well, and just, if you even wanna take it even a step deeper into the correlation, look how you and your sister have them same two ones in the same period. You guys mirror y'all on so many levels on it's so many almost levels. scary yeah like even yeah. in our same heart's desire same heart so y'all gonna mirror 
mirror whatever's right with each other and whatever's wrong with each other. You're gonna mirror each other all the time. All yeah. it's like just throwing, it's like throwing you throwing your bullshit at the mirror and hitting your own ass with and it. And I get it back. Yep, you get it right back. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to point out one other thing too, um, in relations to the um the one, the, the double ones in my challenges. Um, also the fact that in my chart, my habit challenge mm -hmm. is a one. Mm -hmm. So again, all these ones, and the, the, the biggest thing too that I find is that I've struggled to be a leader in my life or to step up to that leadership role in my life. And ironically, I am the firstborn. Yep. And so naturally, they say that's supposed to come to you naturally, but it doesn't always it doesn't work out always. like that. Yeah, it doesn't always. Especially when you see the challenges and how they show up in your life in right. neurology. Right, right. That, that's, the, that's the thing. You have to look at the obstacles and the opportunities or the, the pinnacles and the challenges. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Um, you must make effort into cultivating a very steady will, a refined and channeled expressed determination. And you must make effort, put effort into a uh, cultivating a dignified and self-respecting way of being and living, allowing you the ability and capacity to overcome more than most. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what somebody outside of me looking in on my life has to say. I don't care about anybody who is not walking in my own skin. I don't care if they, they what they say about my life and lifestyle. I live a dignified and self-respecting way according to my own morals, my own standards. And, and, and if someone else doesn't think it's dignified or self-respecting that's their problem it's not mine remember my motto is be authentically you unapologetically i don't go around judging uh, others for the way they live and how they live uh, uh, except for reminding myself that i'm grateful that i don't live like that that's that, that if that is a judgment at all i don't i don't care what anybody does i don't care what anybody thinks i don't care what anybody calls themselves doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter you must if you have a one obstacle you must make effort into cultivating a steady will, refined and channeled express determination, and a dignified and self-respecting way of being and living, which allows you the ability and capacity to overcome more than most. I didn't have my share of, of heartaches and, and hiccups and hangups and habits and mishaps and missteps and, and uh, um, all manner of of adversity, some self-imposed, some imagined and then manifested, and some from the outside. And I am grateful and thankful that I'm sitting here today, uh, a couple of, uh, a month, uh, two months uh, into birth year 59, and I'm just as vibrant and vital and active and aware as I was in birth year nine or birth year 19 or 29, 39 or 49. Uh, not patting myself on the back for overcoming anything because everybody on this call has overcome something. Some of us had to overcome something just to get here today. So it's not a feather in my cap for how much adversity I have overcome. It's just a it's just, it just is what it is. And I'm grateful for that capacity. I'm grateful for that ability and, and appreciative of that. And because I know this about myself, I tend to avoid situations, associations, and endeavors that I would have to overcome shit in. 
It's pretty simple. It, like, like I, I always use this as an example. If you knew that the road you're driving on, if you knew that 10 miles down the way that it was flooded out, would you keep going or would you go another way? Just keep on driving. Oh, it's flooded. I think I'll make it through though. No, most everybody would take an alternative route. If you don't have to overcome the storm, why should you? If you know you can go around the storm, go under it or over it, or sometimes you have no choice but to go through it. And that's when that ability and the capacity to overcome truly, truly, truly kicks in. And I'm appreciative for it. Any comments, any questions on that portion of it? Yes, Deidre. Well, I was thinking while you said that, uh... I was thinking that if you avoid it, then that means that sometime you still have to address the same thing. So is, is that helpful to avoid it? Mm. Well, I don't necessarily believe that if I take an alternative route that I am keeping something in the pattern. I believe if I take an alternative route, I am being mindful and I'm trusting my intuition and that part of my journey will pass. Yeah. If, if you don't have to get knocked upside the head to know that somebody's crazy, isn't that okay? I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jolene, you want to, you chimed in, you want to chime in on something. Yeah. I like the idea that I've been working um, myself and with my clients, how we cultivate when we need to. So if a situation, a problem is overwhelming, is too much, give it, uh, put it in a place, choose somewhere outside the body system. You can choose it outside your, ho your home, mm -hmm. right? It's a metaphor that so you can put that energy where you want it. And when you're ready to deal with it and solve it and talk about it and discuss it and process it, then you pick it up again. But it's, um, my thing is that if you choose to wear it everywhere you go, you're just tiring yourself down. Oh, it's like an so, albatross around that neck, man. Yeah, so to cultivate, it needs time and free will to cultivate it. And then if yes. something happens or if it's something too much, then you pick the time, the place, wherever to deal with it. But it doesn't, you don't have to carry it like. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for that. Did you? I, I know yeah, you had something I, else. Yeah. Yeah. I like that because um, that was good. Thank you, Jolene. You're that welcome. was good. I needed that because I'm I'm carrying this this bag. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'm carrying this bag and I don't want to deal with it um, at all. It, it, I, finding myself being grumpy, and I didn't even know that I was uh, that that was bothering me. You understand? I didn't know until I, uh, it was brought to my attention. I, well, it was brought to my attention that um, I can be uh, mean and um, uh, void of compassion. And I thought I was a very compassionate person. However, when it comes to, like we were talking about family, I have my foot, my, I'm like the bull, like my feet are down and my heels are in the ground and I'm ready to flick my head up with my horns. Horns are, <laughs> yep. I already know. And I don't have uh, toys anywhere in my place. <laughs> I already know. You already know what? Uh, uh, you know, uh, with that family and, and you know, you got your, got your hooves in the dirt and you ready to stick somebody with them horns. Yes, yes. And so, you still, you still can carry your, your compassion. You mm -hmm. just taking it, you're taking it wherever you go. So even in anger, your compassion in your anger, mm -hmm. you know, to minimize all of your feelings. That's where we get tripped up. If you got, you know. <laughs> and to, and to keep pushing, pushing things down or pushing them away that need to be resolved yeah that it doesn't do you any good and it doesn't do the other person any good because i know how you are deirdre you'll push push it down push it down push it down and then when that gate to the uh barn is open your ass gonna take off running with them horns pointing straight out that's that moon and leo yeah <laughs> pointed straight out 
And I, you know what? I don't mean any harm. I'm just trying to keep you off of me. Just That's clearing all. space. All you're doing is clearing space. Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. it. That's it. So I get that. I get that. Thank you for that. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, again, with a number one obstacle, you must not hold grudges and must avoid resentment and vengeful thought patterns. And you must never look to place blame on others. And, and you must resist fighting against the hurts and, and being or becoming headstrong as this will lead to mistakes in judgments, actions, and intentions and make you seem unreasonable. Um, I really never understood why I didn't hold the grudge. Yeah, you could say something to me and I clap back and then about 15 minutes later, I'm good. It, it just, it wouldn't stick. Um, I don't hold resentment to anybody that has done me wrong, either real or perceived. And I never seek, I never think in a vengeful way, you know, with a vengeful thought pattern, you know, somebody stole my, my, uh, somebody stepped on my foot. So I'm going to step on your foot type of shit, you know, not, never like that. My uh, aggressiveness and my uh, um, uh, violent tendencies always around self-preservation. Always. Uh, uh, never out looking for anything. Always ready to defend myself and my loved ones. Yes. Yeah. Always. Um, this part about uh, uh, never placing blame. <sighs> that really, really, really boils down to owning your own shit. I had no choice but to do that in my grandmother and grandfather's house. I had, I learned the, it was a painful lesson of owning your stuff, owning your shit because I was the only child in the house. So if anything was moved, if anything was broke, if anything was missing, if somebody left a dollar in the ashtray and it was gone, guess who got blamed for it? Yeah. And yeah, they, they, they don't, they didn't come, they didn't blame talking first they blamed whooping first and then talk uh so by by the fact that i was like no i didn't do that and it was blah, 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 blah. and every time i went to tell who did it i got whooped more for being a tattletale so i learned painfully about not looking to place blame on others vis-a-vis -vis owning my own shit. Uh, and I learned painfully that fighting against those hurts, you know, uh, uh, being accused, worst thing that, 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 that one, one, one of the worst things for me, being accused of something that I didn't do or that is not me. I, I just, uh, and this was, like I said, this was, uh something that started in childhood being accused think you better than me you think you smarter than me you think you got more oh my god mm -mm. i i wanna i wanna give some encourage i feel to give some encouragement um mm -hmm. you know children are children right mm -hmm. they don't initiate adult issues the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the adults most of the time don't even know their issues, but then the children fall witness to their issues. Mm -hmm. And it's just unfortunate, like it's so unfortunate that still this day, you know, adult parents, adults blame children. I, I will never understand that. There's no research to tell me that makes freaking sense. It doesn't. Right. And it never it's has. just, a, it, it's, um, it's unfortunate. But yeah, I'm glad that you found and, Oh, Build yeah. yourself to say that and share 
Oh know? yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And and uh uh and and being and becoming headstrong as this will lead to mistakes. Yeah, whenever I I would get uh uh and just uh you know uh matter than mad then then I make uh uh poor judgments. Uh I do uh I do things that uh, not only dangerous uh, to others, but dangerous to myself. And then I have really bad intentions. So, and that's not how I ever wanted to live. And yes, uh, it, 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 in those times, I am very, very unreasonable, very unreasonable. Has it, ha, it has taken, you know, the better part of 59 years uh, to be able to, uh, see when that is coming and avert that and arrest it or, or keep it at bay. Yeah. Because of a number one obstacle, you should rely upon your quick wit, originality, and personal ideal ideas as they are very valuable, especially when they are embraced and nurtured. Um, uh, regardless if there are a few ones in your given names at birth, and aside from your positive and dominant character, a wider, broader, and expansive expression of purpose must still be nurtured, cultivated, and encouraged. Uh, this, these classes that I do and everything I do with my website and readings and all of that, that is a wider, broader, and expansive expression of purpose that I have nurtured, cultivated, and continually encourage. And that is obstacle number one. Any comments concerning obstacle number one? Nope. All right, we'll move on to obstacle number two. Number two obstacle. The appearance of a number two obstacle is one of the most common of obstacles as sensitiveness is a natural thing for all human inhabitants on planet Earth. Uh, um, I, I'm not a veterinar veterinarian or, or anything of that nature, so I'm not gonna get into if animals or pets have feelings and emotions and are sensitive. I'm quite sure they have to be if they are under the uh auspices of 3d however for this purposes these are this is concerning all of us human inhabitants on planet earth <clears throat> without sensitiveness uh it'd be a pretty cold and and exact uh which which in this sense i mean plain existence uh, the presence of a number two obstacle affords and equips you with very fine, proper, and dignified characteristics. It, if you got a two in your chart, if, you, if it's in a major position, you are equipped with very fine, proper, and dignified characteristics. That is the blessing of the number two. Without this number two obstacle, your responses to the health, strength, and appropriateness of all situations, associations, and endeavor will be lacking in empathy, compassion, and tolerance, and the tough, rough, coarse, and difficult phases of life would dominate your experience and reality. Any comments? With, okay. We'll Wait, I'm sorry. Can oh, you oh. just repeat that last part just one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The presence of a number two uh, obstacle affords and equips you with a very fine, proper, and dignified characteristics. Without this number two obstacle, your responses to the health, strength, and appropriateness of all situations, associations, and endeavors will be lacking in empathy, compassion, and tolerance, and the tough, rough, coarse, and difficult phases of life would dominate your experience and reality. Thank you. 
Mm. All right. With a number two obstacle, you must avoid becoming and resist being easily offended, easily hurt, and overreactive to slights and personal digs as it will manifest as fear, timidity, and a lack of self-confidence and become a constant source of deep pain and suffering mentally, emotionally, and physically. With this, with this number two obstacle and, you know, uh, two, uh, uh, number two person anyway, yeah, you have to avoid uh, becoming, staying, looking for, and resist being easily offended, easily hurt. Uh, you got, uh, you, you know that saying, the uh, old folks, you say, got, you got to toughen up your skin, you're too thin skinned, uh, uh, and overreactive to slights and personal digs, as it, it does manifest as fear, timidity, and a lack of self confidence. And it will be constant. You'll just be thinking about that shit over and over and over. And once you get into that cycle, that the that, that constant source of deep pain and suffering, that mental pain and emotional pain and mental suffering and emotional suffering, you do that long enough, it's going to manifest physically too, as well. Anybody want to comment on that? Yes, Deirdre, go right ahead. I don't know that that I'm a two, but I know that I've experienced, I don't know if I have twos, but I know I've experienced that. And what I do with that is I hold it all to myself and manage it myself in my head um, and the feelings in the whole nine all by myself. And I've had mm -hmm. the very experience of what you're saying, because usually there's no one to talk about what I'm experiencing with. So I've had to uh, I really have had to do that a lot. And I, I, that uh, makes me, I, everything you just said, I, I can see that in me. And I'm not a timid person, but when I have those type where I felt like I was offended, mm -hmm. and, um, instead of getting into a, a, a discussion or a disagreement or somebody not uh, accepting how I feel about it, it was better just to keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. But I have to get into all of that. Does that sound two-ish? That sounds very two-ish indeed. Okay. <laughs> very two-ish indeed. How to do better. <laughs> I need to speak the hell up, huh? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, not only that, look at you, when, when people say things to you, you have to first consider the source of where this information is coming from. That's number one. If it's, if it's somebody that is a hater anyway, well, it, it, you shouldn't give it that much weight. Number two, and this is the most important thing. If what they are saying about you isn't true, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be offended or hurt by it. It's just that I'm always misunderstood. That's another situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's not true just like my people that I grew up with used to call me a dumbass all the time well I knew that I wasn't a dumbass I got you so I, I, was, I act like it, they weren't even talking to me so why would a two have all those feelings on their shoulders anyway because the two is full of sensitivity. The two is about balance. The two is about harmony. The two is about tolerance. Two is the most sensitive number of the, of the numbers. That's where all sensitivity comes from, from the two. I yeah. got you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, a constant <laughs> fit. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I'm a number two, and I think I've seen the cultivation because when I was growing up, I used to be teased and teased and jumped, right? Mm -hmm. I used to pray a lot. Uh -huh. And then my sister, you know, gave me this understanding where 
my mother had my sister pick me up because she's got tired of me getting beat up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my sister, you know, gave me that thing in, in me and said, you know what, are you tired of me picking you up? I said, no. And she says, I'm tired of it. You do, you know, you take care of it. And once she put that in my body system that I was responsible for protecting me, myself and I, I've never, I never lost a fight. And my last fight was less than 10 years ago. All right. right? All and right. so I'm, you know, it's still, and I think once you talk to your body system mm -hmm. and, you know, once it agrees, your conscious agrees with your unconscious, mm -hmm. there is no battle. There should be no battle within. I'm yeah, telling there you, there should no be no balance that. within. Yeah, and so we, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect, but it should be some kind of a higher than 50 or 60% where you can be able to stand. Absolutely. And and not not be so because I am sensitive Absolutely. and I am um I easily offended. You remember that guy who spit in my 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 kitchen? Yep. <laughs> I I I had I mean I cursed his ass out and I, you know, but I like him now. <laughs> and so it's like you have to like that's have a two. That, 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 is, that is definitely the action of the two. Yeah, you yeah. you know you have to have that conversation, but believe me, he he I Believe me, I took care of that. I, I know you did. Thank you for that, Jolene. Uh, Victorious, you had your hand up. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Keep going. Oh, okay, no worries. Thank you. Thank you. I will get to you quicker next time, I promise. Um, a constant feeling of being less than, subordinate, or of being weak will definitely affect your active pursuit of success and will give you a propensity to be influenced by what others say, think, and feel. Um, so that is something to always be mindful of as well. Because of a number two obstacle, your sensitiveness represents your intelligence. Let me repeat that. Because of a number two obstacle, or just because of a two in general, you, your sensitiveness represents your intelligence and understanding of the finer relationships in life. Did you want to chime in, Victorious? Oh, I am so sorry. I didn't realize I didn't have my phone muted. Oh, um, it's okay. I I actually remember what I was going to say when you were referencing something to the number two is that the okay. number two is strongly associated with the moon. Yes. And so that has a lot to do with our um, sensitivity. And then even something deeper as to what you're saying is that the moon rules our subconscious. Yes. And so um, contrary to what most people think about the mind, most of our memory is actually stored in our heart chakra and yeah. in our memory. Yeah, that's where our memories are, are in the heart chakra. It's not in our mind. And no. the mind and the brain are two entirely different things. Separate, no. separate yeah. things. Yeah, so, separate. I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, yes, Didra. Okay, so like, I'm like you not hugging grudges and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. And a, a lot of things have happened. So what happens to me is all of a sudden I will get a memory and I'm like, oh yeah, they did do that. <laughs> and then um, I get indignant. Um, I get angry. Well, and, and let me help you with, with that. Please. Because Please. for me, yeah, I don't hold grudges and all of that. I just don't fuck with you no more. That's it right there. Bye. Period. That's it. <laughs> I just stopped yeah. fucking with you. I really appreciate this class. I'm getting so much from it. I just want you to know. I'm soon I, I'm I'm thinking about putting my video on. <laughs> Anytime you want. I you always want. hide myself. It's okay. Anytime you want, you can put your video on. <laughs> Thank Anytime. You. Thank you for that. Uh yeah, because of a number two obstacle, your sensitiveness represents your intelligence and understanding of the final relationships of life. 
It is only when it turns into hurt feelings, held on to grudges, jealousies, and acute fear of people that it becomes a negative character trait. As long as it's not harboring or turning into hurt feelings or held on, held on to grudges, jealousies, and acute fear of people, then it's not a character trait. In fact, your sensitiveness is your security system. Number twos, it's your security system. It only get to acting up when danger is, is around. Pay attention to it. You should empower and encourage your natural talent for relating facts, perfecting details, and for always sensing and knowing what is morally right and correct. And you should always cultivate harmony and proper behavior as ways and means to elevate your self-confidence and feelings of usefulness. Any comments on obstacle number two? Yes, I do have a comment. Because with that last statement that you made, sometimes it's so upsetting for me because I know that I, I strive to present myself in a certain way, not just in public, but just, I have morals, I have standards, I have, you know, ethics that I live by. And sometimes because um, I have a rising Taurus and I have a lot of Gemini in my first house, so Sometimes I think I come off as too friendly and sometimes I feel like um, that gets taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm starting to become very sensitive to the word nice because I have felt like for so long um, people have taken a, 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 an advantage of my kindness. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to feel some kind of way uh, about that word, especially now that I know the deeper meaning of it. So... All that that comes with the two, um, sometimes I just feel like I get taken advantage of. And I, um, like now at my age, there's some resentment. <laughs> and Absolutely. I'm, I'm working on that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Work to, to work yourself through that. And, and, you know, even if you can only... Uh, if, if, if you feel it's only safe to confront the objects of the resentment via a letter and you don't even have to send it to them, just write it so that you can get it out of your own soul and your own consciousness, um, that will be something that will assist you in, in releasing uh, that resentment and releasing those vengeful thought patterns. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Number three obstacle. <clears throat> the presence of a number three obstacle equips you with a very vivid and fine imagination, the gift of gab in written and spoken expressions, and latent artistic talent. However, it also manifests as a barrier to the full expression of these qualities characteristics and talent. We know that the three is the gifted artist and the, and the gifted performer and, and, and the gifted athlete and all of that. However, with this three obstacle, you have all of that, but you also have the barrier and the obstacles and the uh, impediments in, in fully expressing those qualities, characteristics and talents. This may be due to the repression of others and from a feeling of not wanting to appear too forward, pushy or out there and could just as easily be some form of self-imposed repression. Any comments? All right. The number three obstacle is present with many artists, performers, and other artistic professionals, causing for a latter life production and recognition of the full expression of these qualities to come forth. If 
many of the artists and performers, some athletes, uh, um, uh, you know, they 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 have it in their soul at a young age to 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 perform and to to be creative. They have these obstacles, this three obstacle that's governing maybe, you know, from birth to uh, early 30s or from birth to early 30s and then into their 40s. And they just seem to just uh, not make so much hay or, or not make so much of a name for themselves. And then all of a sudden, you know, in, in latter life, it, you know, they get over 50 and they have what, what is many term as a renaissance. Yeah, that's because they have a three obstacle uh, uh, somewhere in, and normally it'll be in that first period of life, which covers birth till at least 30, 31 years old. Um, uh, and because of, of, of this, um, the three, the, with the, the people with this three obstacle always feel that it is due to someone else or that what they're doing is, is, is outside of the box. Normally what a three does is outside the box anyway. So the three has been, has been uh, um, taught through experience that some of that outlandish shit, you just want to keep it to yourself or go do it by yourself. You don't, you, you don't want to show people some of this stuff because it might be out there. It might be provocative. It might be pushy it might be too forward it might just be too much for folks who don't have threes in their chart and because of that and because it seems like it is a repetitive thing the the repression from others normally turns in self-imposed repression where the three or a person with this three obstacle will just say fuck it man it's gonna be held back or it's gonna be judged wrongly anyway so fuck it i ain't even gonna do it Anybody experience that with threes in their chart or have this three? Uh, um, I'm a uh, three. Obstacle? I'm a three. And I like when you said the latter life of production. I mm -hmm. feel that way. Um, and I felt that way years ago with my daughter's father. I thought he was the smartest thing. I, I you know, as far as a guy and liking someone, I thought he was the smartest little thing. And then when my daughter was growing up, I always said, oh, my daughter is so smart like him, not including me <laughs> in that equation. Now I'm understanding, oh, why, why can't I include myself in that? And so it, it, that, that understanding could be so, you don't even know in your speech that you're mm -hmm. knocking yourself out. You're just knocking yourself down and you just mm -hmm. don't know. You, you just don't it know. Away, you give it away, and yes. you're forgetting, you know. Yes, and, and because, like I said, because it's so repeated so much in your life, you start to expect it, and then you just hold your own shit back. You're just like, ah, oh, right. fuck, but it ain't even worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to push through all of that. I, I, I push through that every day. Believe it or not, I push through that. Uh, fuck it every day. <laughs> I, mm. I truly, I have to. Because I have threes in major position. I have a three- a uh, soul journey, a three soul urge, a three soul uh, energy. So I have to, I have to push through that every day. So I get it. I get it. Thank you for that, Julian. Uh, mm -hmm. The number three obstacle is present with many artists. Yeah, we deal with that. Uh, writing books, creating beautiful works of art, painting, sculpting, uh, clay work, or designing any lovely creation, any lovely creation, a uh, uh, software design for somebody, uh, um, uh, interior design someone's home, uh, make a, a beautiful cake or a beautiful pie or a beautiful meal, anything that, that deals with designing, Anything lovely, a lovely creation is a much better use of your creative imagination and talents. Uh, number three obstacle. When in pursuit of love and romance and dealing with love and romance, the use of hurtful, belligerent, and tactless words, 
spoken when emotional and impulsively will definitely cause a falling away of loved ones, family, and friends, and cause you to not receive the admiration and love you desire and deserve. Any comments? All right. With a number three obstacle, you may have a very strong dislike of personal criticism, slights, and character assassinations due to the presence of a deep-seated feeling of personal importance. Ain't, can't nobody tell a three that they ain't important because the three knows it. Even if it's just to themselves, the three knows they are important. You must never bury, suppress, shun, or otherwise hide your creative talents. You must bring them out into the forefront boldly and confidently and learn the value of effective and positive communication. There's no greater gift and tool and asset for anyone with a three obstacle than bringing your creative talents out into the forefront boldly and confidently and learning and practicing the value of effective and positive communication. You will go far. Finally, for the number three obstacle, you must learn to be an, an authentic individual and ally, showing genuine interests in others as much as in self any comments about number three obstacle all right I will just to say one thing it's really okay. interesting because you I've had the two the one the one and the three so you just covered everything that I have been through and what I'm going through right now and so interesting enough is that that three has been the biggest like I have so much content on my computer about all the stuff that I want to put out but again I had those challenges of those ones to become a leader and even the two in my first challenge um with just everything that comes with the two of being too sensitive and mm -hmm. for a long time I found myself that I would get knocked down and even now um, and I'm finally coming out of this is learning to overcome the challenges and I'm still overcoming the challenges of the twos and the ones. Absolutely. You know, you will. And it, three. It, as long as you incarnate it, you will. Yeah. But now, so, now you have, now you have a better awareness of them and, and a willingness to work through those things that take away from and dim your light. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this. This is so amazing. This is, if I'm going to speak from the eye, this is so uplifting for my soul because even though I know a little bit about numerology, mm -hmm. um, I am learning more in depth information. And this is just adding to all of my spiritual awareness. So I'm just giving you your flowers right now. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. And then lastly, the number four obstacle. <clears throat> the appearance of a number four obstacle is an excellent obstacle. Let me repeat that. The appearance of a number four obstacle is an excellent obstacle. However, not found as commonly as the number one, number two, or number three obstacle. It's, 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 it's not rare. However, it is not common. Not common. It is a practical and productive obstacle. It is very serious and gifted with a sense of values and are embedded deep in the person who has a number four obstacle. 
no matter what the other indicators are in your given names at birth, this obstacle indicates that there is much work still to do. There are many tasks that must be patiently completed with your steady and consistent application of your efforts and ambitions slowly building up to the plateaus of success and the collecting of material possessions. Any comments on, on the first part of this number four obstacle? Nope. Oh. I like being in a four. I like being all, because you said I'm a mixed ox obstacle. <laughs> And so I'm just liking all of it. I think it's um, good encouragement for me, you know, and even if I don't see all of it, at least I can see that it's possible so I can move that there. Absolutely. And so I think it's a really positive conversation and encouragement for me because, you know, five days a week, you know, you encourage others, others, others as a therapist and you forget. And so thank you for I like what Victoria said. It's just so inspiring and uplifting because we always concern about other people. Sometimes we need to look in the mirror. That's right. That's right. Thank you for that, Joanne. <clears throat> the number four obstacle calls for focusing your thoughts, actions, words, and deeds in one direction and on one purpose or project calmly and securely until you have completed it as restlessness and jumping from one thing to another will never bring you the permanent accomplishments possible with this number four obstacle. The number four obstacle, you, you build some shit that lasts. It'll last longer than, than, than your asses here. You could come back and you could build some shit this incarnation uh, shuffle off, come back 144 years from now, and the shit you built last time will still be here. Wow. Still be here. Number four, obstacle people build shit of permanence that, that live on in posterity. You like and strive for complete security, and you must diligently work for it as you are very capable of transforming dreams and ideas into concrete form and substance. With a number four obstacle, you are equipped with a sense of being thrifty, you possess great integrity, and you are able to face life straight up and honestly, should, should you experience extreme combativeness, seek out more education and refinement, meditation, yoga, something to calm you, as these will be of great assistance and importance in overcoming that. You must always be very mindful of expressing too strong of opinions, which may be problematic if allowed to go unchecked. You must bring your deep-seated desire for building something into realized form to the forefront and put the necessary work in towards manifesting whatever it is that you desire to build. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is number four obstacle. I got a number four obstacle on the, on the line, but I don't think they're going to say anything. Just put a thumbs up if I was oh, all right, number four obstacle. Yeah, you was <laughs> Oh, there she is. I ain't that shy. I'll say so. <laughs> Well, give me some comments on, on, on what I just uh, 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 shared with you about the uh, 
about your life so far up until now because you have uh you have them back to back so you are still in in a four obstacle pretty close to what has been going on for you uh sharon <laughs> yeah can't hear you yes okay all right well thank you thank you um thank you Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, uh, again, this is my uh, refined and channeled expressed determination. And this is, this is uh, uh, my purpose. My purpose is to empower and equip and encourage everyone to get to know themselves authentically down to the soul core. And yeah, that's why, that's why I keep showing up every Tuesday. Thursday and Saturday at four o'clock. Uh, this is this is what I do. I'm appreciative of, of, of all of the words of encouragement. Just y'all showing up is encouragement enough for me. And I really want to let y'all know that, that I really, really, really appreciate every one of you. Anybody got any comments before we shut it down tonight? Deirdre, you good? Yeah, I am. Oh, I have something to say. Um, Victoria, okay. I, I sent you a direct message. I didn't, you know, know how you felt about putting your business out there. So check the chat, please. Is she still here? Yeah. Victoria, did you hear uh, Sharon? I did. I don't see the direct chat. Um, do you have my number? Can she hear me? Yes, she can hear you. I do not. I do not. Um, I can put okay. my number in the chat real quick. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, how do I do this? Oh, um, oh this, there we go. Yeah, you can pull down, uh, Sharon. Pull down that two. You see where it says two? Pull it down and click on Sharon Denise, and then it'll just, she be the only it. one that can Did see. Did you get it? I got it, sis. I got it. Okay, awesome. All right. Anybody else? Nope. All right. Well, this has been On the Sevens with Pythias B. Metatron, where we come to awaken, ascend, and expand. We do go through the 88 steps into your master self. And I guarantee you, if you keep on, on the Sevens with Pythias B. Metatron, a part of your soul's journey, somewhere along the way, your master self awaits you. I love each and every one of you that shows up and listens and takes time to be a part of this. And whenever I say goodbye, you know it's just for today. It's not forever. So with that, I love each and every one of you. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you this coming Tuesday. And goodbye for now. Ciao. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you again, Jolene. Yeah, Have a great night. Be blessed all. You Thank too, you. Too.